So it's, uh, I'm not sure what day it is. I think it's day four or five. Um, we're going back out to start checking some more baits um, and just, you know, hopefully these cats have made their rounds and are coming back to the sites that we know that they visit and that uh, we can start building our blind and, and start this next step. Um, we're gonna keep scouting for other animals while we're out. And yeah, you know, don't let anyone tell you that leopard hunting is, is physically or mentally easy. You know, you just have to keep pushing through and just trust that these guys really do know what they're doing and when the cats get there, they get there. So yeah, let's keep moving. Every time when we at the shows, clients come to the booth and a lot of times, even Rowdy said to me, you are, it looks like you, you're trying to interrogate the client that wants to book a lion, a leopard hunt. And then I always tell the clients, I, I told Rowdy and I told many people, you cannot waste a leopard tag on anybody. And I mean it waste because you, you book a hunt with somebody that thinks they can do this. This is a mentally tough hunt. Um, it is a hunt that that takes a lot of um, emotional maturity and you must just keep on doing what you're doing and it becomes repetitive. You're doing baits, 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 baits. You start running out of animals to hunt or trophy animals to hunt because all you do is shoot baits and put baits up and replenish baits. And here in Mozambique, even in winter time, it's so warm that a bait rots up in three to four days. By day five, your bait is busy running away with all the maggots. So it's a consistent, repetitive job. But if you cannot keep on doing what you're doing, you can't hunt leopard. And the next phase will be building blinds, sitting and waiting for the cat. That's the next repetitive thing. Then it's baits, baits, build blinds, sit. Baits, baits, build blinds, sit. And you keep on doing it and until your 14 days run out. So. It is just something that not a lot of people, I've had guys at day four that says, I'm done. I want to go home. I want to do other stuff. I don't want to hunt leopard anymore. They lose their money. All the daily rates, everything they spent, they just didn't pay for the trophy of the animal. So um, it's not easy. And there are a lot of people that can do it. And there's a lot of people that have, do it, have done it. And there's a lot of people that do it over and over. It's just one of those things. It's not the easiest. It's, uh, it's a mental hunt. A mental hunt. That's what I would say, Jeremy. Yeah. It's a mental hunt. It's, it's different than any other safari. And there's highs and lows. Highs and lows. We're driving now to the baits. There's the promise of a cat on bait. Then you get to the bait. Bloody hell. There's no bloody cat. You get back on the truck. You get yourself back up. All right. Next bait. And then by 11 o'clock, all the baits are checked. No cat on bait. Then, then you feel like you feel like shit. Then you have to start all over again, and hope for tomorrow. That's the thing. The guy stolen the garbage. He's got a pair of boots, and he has spikes on the bottom of his boots that long. So it's the next one. The camera off, go. I can last another day. But I want Albert to come maybe uh, just uh, put that war talk that Jeremy shot yesterday. I'm going to give it another go and just hang it here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I just want to tell Albert to put him. He's going to go back. Yeah, he's at the other camp. So. Down, one ingi to go. <laughs> We've just been caught by uh, young Kwas. He says, a cat has feet fed on this bait. It is a bait that was put out yesterday late and we didn't have a spare camera. So we came here to put a camera out, but the cat, the, the cat hit the bait. So we're going to quickly go in, check the bait and make sure it's a male or a female. Oh, 
hopefully start building a blind and taking the next step. back behind this where we found those tracks. So Anton's going to put up the camera now and uh, just making a new plan to see where we're going to put a blind. Um, and if this is where we're going to sit tonight and if so, you know, the show starts. All right. What have we been waiting for? All right, so we, we didn't have a camera here last night. The cat ate last night. Or early this morning, if I look at the the eating, these visible big dew claw marks in the animal. Males eat ribs and eat big chunks, and then last but not the least, males mark their bite sites by peeing and pooping and scratching. And there's a, a poop and scratch mark here. So, looking at the track, I confidently feel it's a big male. And I would advise the client to sit and build a blind today. So, Anton is scouting a spot right now for the blind. Currently where he's at is a decent shooting lane where we have to have minimal cutting and minimal noise out here. Uh, he's at 80 yards, which is more than enough uh, to make a good shot and to conceal yourself. So we're just waiting for the final call and then some of us will head back to camp, uh, get all the supplies, get everything we need, get rested for the night, and then the rest of us will stay here and uh, we'll start building the blind.
I'll spray down. Jeremy? Thanks, Steve. Hey, bro. Let's spray down. So, uh, finish. We saw a group of hardebees. We saw them running. We saw there was two good bulls with them in the back. Uh, they came around an island, if you will. We, uh, we stalked one spot, saw a group, noticed the bulls weren't with them. So we decided to come around this uh, big anthill. Uh, Anton just poked, barely poked his head over. Saw the bull feeding perfectly broadside at maybe 65 yards. Um, quickly got the stick set up. <laughs> Luckily, he was looking at my rifle and where I was pointing because uh, I was looking at a completely different animal. He made a quick adjustment for me, and I was dead on the animal. I put one right to his shoulder. He went down immediately. One and done. The animal's expired now, so I'm going to walk up. I'm going to get my hands on him. But, uh, the 375 did its job. You know, in this forest, you know, you don't get a constant wind. It's always swirling. Yeah. yeah. Great animal. Thank you. Good job. Thank you, sir. Good stuff, man. Yeah. Good job. Nice, good driver. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a good driver. I'm a good driver. Look. Jeez. Look at the base. Yeah, he's a tank. You did good. Thank you, sir. He's a tank. All right. All right, give me a hug. Good job. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Here's a good one. Yes. Now we get the fun of loading this big thing without a winch, and that's going to be. Y'all do. I'm going to supervise. Well, every good job needs a good supervisor. Yes, sure it does. found a poacher walking that was a little a little crazy for me there. I don't know, not enough water or something he ate or, or something, but the guy would never even make eye contact. He just kept looking at the ground, uh, could almost barely talk. So right now we're at his little campsite where he had a fire and got some food from the uh, little pods, I guess, in the grass and the water back here. So now they're just going through, going through the bag that he left here. You can see like this lint or a real fine hair stuff. I'm assuming that's some kind of net. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they sent him towards towards camp. And uh, yeah, he's I mean he's still walking. You can tell he's barely moving. 
But uh, yeah, I mean, just goes to show too. I mean, you never, you never know who's walking out here, you know, and where poachers are, and how many snares this guy may have set, or what he may have had hand in, you know, killing that took for a long, long time and had animals really suffering. So, I mean, you want to get rid of these guys, you know, one way or another, give them to the authorities uh, so they can they can handle them or the local chief. But, uh, yeah, it's just another part of conservation, another part of what these guys deal with on a daily basis. So, um, you know, they're very professional how they talked to them and treated them. And um, it's just it's kind of wild to see. You know, you always hear about it, but it's one of those things like you never think you'd actually see a poacher out here or catch one. And, uh, so yeah, it's really eye-opening. You know, it's just kind of wild. And uh, hopefully he's the only one on this trip that, that we see.